Uh, yeah, so I'm Chase, uh, field data collection engineer is my job title here at IGPS. So I lead most of our trainings, both virtual and in-person with our customers. I also use the device for our own production from time to time for our own Ike Analyze projects as well. So I don't only train, I also use the device uh, in practice. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the video. So the tripod is part of the data collection system. It provides stability for collecting accurate measurements. You will set up the tripod to stand at a comfortable height by extending all the legs. So that's what I'm doing here, opening those clasps. And then the grip lever is important to use to smoothly capture measurements, especially your point-to-point -point measurements. Now on the back of the device, you will have a gray tripod adapter plate screwed in. You're gonna to wanna to make sure this is secure, but not too tight. Uh, hand tightness works great. The device is also protected from heat and minor drops with a removable silicone case. This case provides additional grip while handling a device and the screen cover flap secures to the top of the case. So now you can place the device on the tripod securely. You'll want to open the quick release lever and mount the device with the adapter plate screwed to the back and then double check that that adapter plate has a tight hold on the device if anything's wiggling around you'll just want to tighten it up to feel comfortably yep and i'll just throw out a quick note here all of the fielding accessories can be found on the ike store and i'll drop the link here in the chat you can purchase spare uh, tripod parts uh, soft cover cases and more. So I'll throw that link in here now. Thank you, Greg. All right, so you can press the side button to power up or unlock the device and open Ike Field. And you will log in or log out and then log back in to be sure you are using the most updated forms for creating a new job. So I'm just logging in here. And after I log in, it's going to land me on the My Jobs tab. This is going to show all the jobs saved on the local storage. So to start a new job, you select the plus symbol. And then you're going to either name the job or hit the Choose Form button. So after that, the Create Job button will light up orange. You do need a Wi-Fi connection for the part where you select a form. But after that, I'm able to go collect off the grid. So now you can open your job and get to work. Um, you'll notice that there is a workflow to the form. This is a Ike Pull Foreman form I'm scrolling through. We will go through this part by part, showing you how to collect the information in the field. Several of the fields are simple text or select lists, which we will not go into depth on today. We're gonna focus on the field collection tools in this overview. So here I'm just opening up all the various subforms in this Ike Pull Foreman integrated collection form. So we have equipment, anchors, spans, and services. Uh, you can think of subforms as just a folder within your main form. And we can add those on a as-needed basis per unit type that happens to exist at that pole. All right, and uh, something I wanna note here about job creation. If you're using standard Ike Office, the job is created on the device. But if you're using Ike Office Pro, you have the choice between starting the job on the device or importing it into Ike Office Pro and then downloading it to the device. So there's a more flexible workflow when it comes to Ike Office Pro, and it can make those large and complex jobs much easier if you can preload all those jobs. Um, so we'll be talking about you know, how to download jobs to a device um, in another session, but uh, just note that there are two workflows for creating a job. All right, and now we are ready to start collecting our poll data. So we'll first walk up to the poll to get some core details. I like to rec uh, recommend the acronym IDEAL. It's good to capture the ID, equipment, anchor, and location while you're up next to the poll. And after that, we can come off the pole to capture some of our other measurements. So your workflow and form might be a bit different based on your needs and what you need to collect, but follow the same general collection steps. So we're gonna start by entering the ID. 
this is usually going to be a vertical placard on the pole, uh, a pole inventory number. Um, and then I can also capture those things in the tag photos field. So there I'm just capturing a birthmark. That's the stamp on the pole showing us our height and class. And then here I'm checking for any ID tags. So this pole does have a switch number on it. So I'll capture that. We don't actually have a poll asset number on this poll. So I'm just going to photograph the no poll ID call out on the guy gauge there. And that just shows I checked for an ID and one was not present. Now we're going to move on to capturing location. So if you're capturing with RTK, it's best to use local position, ensuring you have an RTK fix before capturing it. You'll also want to input the correct antenna height, which is the distance above ground that your device is standing. So the length of the tripod. So with standard tripod leg extension, this is around four feet, four inches. So I'm just inputting the antenna height and that's gonna give us an accurate ground altitude for that measurement. And with target location, this is gonna be the quickest way to capture a location, especially if you're not using RTK, uh, where you aim at the spot you want to capture. So with this yeah. method, try to aim the laser slightly above the base of the pole so you can get accurate ground elevation. And then and, uh, when you to stand, be mindful of obstructions to the sky. The GNSS accuracy will be better when the device has a more clear communication path to satellites in the sky. Excellent. And before we move on there, sorry to interrupt you, Chase. I just want to throw out a link in the chat channel here on location types. So there might be some people on the call here that are unfamiliar with the different location types. So local point versus taking a target location. All of those location types are described in the article I just put in the chat here. All right, thank you, Greg. So we can collect the equipment bearing with a photo within our form. So to do this, we are going to aim the device in the opposite direction that the equipment is attached to the pole. So directly facing the equipment facilitates accuracy, though the bearing can actually be captured from anywhere around the pole. So right here, I'm just estimating the diameter of the primary riser on this pole I'm collecting. Now I'm gonna open up the equipment, tap the compass icon, and then directly face the equipment. Um, but like I said, I could be in any position around the pole. I could even aim at the ground, so long as the device is pointed at the direction of the back bearing of the equipment. So the captured bearing will automatically be flipped 180 degrees to match the equipment bearing. And up next, I'm going to capture the fuse cutout lightning arrestor bracket on this pole. So once again, clicking orientation, tapping the compass icon. And then I'm directly facing the equipment for demonstration purposes, but once again, I could be anywhere around the pole to do this. All right, and then we'll move on to measuring an anchor. So here I'm going to add a new anchor subform and then collect the lead length and bearing of the anchor on this pole. So we typically want to position ourselves behind the anchor or in a position where we can see the side of the pole that is the same side the anchor is coming off of. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, so this is used to measure the distance and bearing from pole to anchor rod, a horizontal point to point measurement, your point A should be on the base of the pole in line with the anchor. I'm using the zoom slider to really hit the correct spot. And then I'm going to pivot the device over with the tripod stationary on the ground. And then just do the same thing. Use the zoom slider to hit the rod. And then we can also use the Ike guy gauge provided in your fielding kit to measure our down guy sizes. I'm just going to start with a larger caliper size and then work my way down until that semicircle fits snug. So here we have an 8M and a 10M guy that I measured on here, and we can just input that into the guy section of the subform. So I just add a guy, tap back, add another guy subform within our anchor subform, input the relevant sizes, and then I'm good to go. And then we're gonna move on to taking our Ike photos. So now we wanna move away from the pole to do this. Uh, so Ike photos are calibrated measurable photos. You'll want to stand about the same distance from the pole as it is tall. 
you should frame the base of the pole or the top of the base offset stick, as well as the top of the pole in the photo. You will then use the tripod handle to move the device to aim the laser at around halfway up the pole. And you will also check that the vertical line going up and down the screen is nicely aligned with the pole. So just kind of bisecting it. Now you'll move on to your next Ike photo. So it's key to take multiple Ike photos. This allows any back office annotators to have more information about the poll without you having to be sure every attachment is obviously visible from a single perspective. Attachment bolts need to be visible in order to be measured in Ike office. So it's good to just have a comprehensive view of the poll with multiple Ike photos. We typically recommend taking two to three depending on the complexity of the poll. So I'm capturing three for this one. Probably could have gotten away with two, but for good measure, I'm getting that third one. All right, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just interrupt the video for a second. We have a question from the audience from Mitch, and Mitch asks, do you need to calibrate the Ike before use at the start of the job? And uh, I'll go ahead and let Chase answer this one. Yeah, thank you, Mitch. Um, so you don't necessarily need to calibrate the device before every single job. What we typically recommend is calibrating every week or after flying anywhere or spending a prolonged period of time near a lot of uh, magnetic exposure. Um, so it can be good practice to calibrate before every job, although it might not be necessary to do it that frequently. Um, so just try to do it at least every week. Great. All right. We'll go ahead and move on to capturing a span's measurements. Thanks for that Thank question, you. Mitch. Real quick, um, please, everyone, feel free to ask questions. We will certainly give time to answer all questions um, during the session. So we really appreciate uh, any of your questions that you have. So thank you. All right. So yeah, so now we're going to measure a span. Uh, so we're going to use the same vector tool that we used for the anchor, but just applied with span length and bearing. So this is going to measure the distance from pole to pole or pole to a building. So you're going to stand where you can see both points you will be hitting. The spot is often from where you captured the last Ike photo, kind of away from the pole. Just find a good line of sight and aim your point A shot near a wire of your choice. In this case, I'm picking the neutral. And then I'm going to try to hit the neutral on my point B shot as well. So with the tripod planted on the ground, I'm pivoting over to the next pole. And I'm going to try to hit approximately the same position on the next pole there. And that's going to give us an accurate horizontal and slope distance within our measurement. And you can review the measurement to ensure your photos are correct. Now we're gonna move on to mid-span height. So this tool is also a point to point, but in a vertical way. So we can capture the distance of a wire over a road. So you're gonna open the relevant subform and then tap the up and down arrows to open the point to point measurement. You're gonna aim at the wire. So here I'm using the zoom slider to make sure I'm hitting my intended target. And now I'm, with this one, I actually get arrows on the screen guiding me to the position on the ground directly beneath the wire. So this one gives you a little bit of help. And then um, I do also want to point out that I could have been a little bit further off to the side of the road here, but I just wanted to capture over that curb for demonstration purposes. Uh, one of the key benefits of this tool is the safety that can be gained from it, not having to put any equipment in a roadway. Um, so oftentimes you can safely capture that type of measurement off to the side of a road. Awesome. Thanks, Chase. That was really cool seeing everything uh, happen in the field. Um, I know we couldn't be in the field live to show everything at once, but it was cool to go over it with you. Um, so I guess one question that I, I hear a lot about is regarding how to work around a leaning pole. So sometimes in the field, you're going to encounter a pole with significant lean. And, and how do we how do we address that when we're collecting it? Yeah, so with leaning poles, we're going to be a little bit more limited in terms of where we should be standing to capture them from. 
the Ike photos calibration uh, assumes that we have a flat vertical surface in front of us. So when we have a pole leaning toward or away from our perspective, we are getting away from that assumption of a flat vertical surface. But if we stand about 90 or 270 degrees from the direction the pole is leaning and position the tripod from that perspective, um, we can achieve that assumption of having a flat surface uh, from our perspective. And that will facilitate accurate Ike photos when we do have a leading pole.